So let's start with definitions. Um, black virtuality, what is this thing? To start with defining black virtuality, I want to define black and I want to define the virtual. And here I really love going with dictionary definitions because I find them really fun. Um, my preference are the Cambridge definitions and that's what we're using, the Cambridge Dictionary. So virtual, right? Created by or accessed through software, appearing to exist but not formally existing, and almost a particular thing. I love that, that almost. And then here are some de dictionary definitions of black, and these are in order of uh, my preference for them. So black, without hope, very bad or sad, right? Um, black as a verb, right? To blacken something, uh, to make something black. Without any milk or cream added, and I really love this one because I think about my uh, I think about my approach to software and I think about my approach to platforms. I have in a previous talk described uh, Mark Zuckerberg as the human embodiment of milk. So if you take that concept, right, something like Facebook or Twitter with these men who are the human embodiments of milk, what would it look like to have software that didn't have any milk or cream added? Um, and then of course, of or belonging to a group of people. So I wanna talk about how black came to be, right? And here I'm not even talking about virtual space. I'm talking, so I'm situated in the United States. I'm a black American. And so, so much of my experience and my worldview is, in, is informed by this term black, right? Um, to be really simple, cause there's a whole other series of talks, uh, entire disciplines dedicated to this. Blackness was invented by white Europeans for the simple purpose to justify trading human beings as commodities. It's really that simple. So black was a term that was invented and then imposed upon a people, right? And I think about that, like in my corporeal physical form, uh, my people were not always black, we were black end. And I wanna think about, um, let's think about black actuality as defined by whiteness. When I think about whiteness and when I use whiteness in my work, I think of it as a technology itself that is shaping our perceptions, um, our worldviews, the way that we treat each other, the way that we receive images, the way that we create images, and all of that can function um, even in the absence of white people. So really important to start thinking about these terms as, while they can relate to people and physical bodies, also just think of them as concepts and think about them as technologies that have a purpose and a function. Let's take a look at the virtual space, how blackness is imposed, created, uh, how images are blackened in virtual space. And I am uh, situating this work very on a very narrow subset of research, which is uh, my research in 3D graphics. So this goes back to some of my early work when I first started um, this very seeds of the open source Afro hair library, the reason for the open source Afro hair library um, which is, I'll talk about it of course later, but it's um, a free 3D database of black hair textures and styles that was born from results like these. Um, as a digital artist, you know, I was working on virtual reality projects, making games and uh, creating characters and looking for uh, diversity of hair assets because there just weren't any in the um, software that I was using. And um, you can see it's pretty small, but in that search bar at the top right corner, you see me searching for black hair and getting a variety of results that include animals, that include a lot of people that are don't doesn't look like black hair to me, right? Not the hair that grows out of my head, and not the hair that you know I see um, in my family. So this is one way I bring this up because it's not just the visual imagery; it's also the search term here, right? Just the sense that black does not mean. Uh, to the people who designed the site, we're looking at CG Trader right now, doesn't mean the same thing to them as it means to me. And so there's this process, even just in the vernacular, of trying to say, okay, how does whiteness see me, right? How can I find coily hair, kinky hair, Afro-textured hair? What words do I use and what will the results be? So I don't know if you see it, but I see a similarity between the images that we can conjure of a blackness um, in the physical world and a blackness in the virtual space. And for me, that similarity, even before I combine those terms, black and virtual, black already feels 
virtual. It shares those qualities, right? Um, it's to be, to be a person, to be virtually a person, right? Almost a person, but not quite. And this is part of, you know, U.S. history where Black people are not fully citizens, not fully a human, right? Um, and that was legislated into the fabric of uh, this country. But even now, I'll just tell you, as a Black person operating in so many spaces, in academia, I feel often the same kind of idea that, that I am there, I'm, I'm a tenured professor, and I'm the same, almost, I'm virtually the same as everyone else. I should have access, I'm almost there, but I still get these dehumanizations, I still experience that. So when I think about Black uh, virtuality, I'm like, oh, well, this feels um, like a space, like the virtual feels like a space that I'm, that I'm already in, this almost. And yet, you know, out of those, those, those images that we saw that are offensive, out of the, the, the experiences that I've had, uh, the experiences of my people come uh, a different definition and different associations of Black, right? So you take a thing that is imposed upon you and then you reclaim it, you make, you adopt it, you make it yours. And then you have all kinds of beautiful work, beautiful art, constellations of ideas, perspectives, worldviews, ways of making, ways of being together um, that are incredible. Like I love being black and I love blackness and all of the things that I love about being black, our ad adaptivity, our creativity, our generosity, um, the way that we care for our elders, the way that we don't um, want to dispose of people even when they're problematic, or the way that we want to like call community in and be together, um, those are all adaptations from um, something that's been uh, imposed, um, but yet something, something beautiful comes of that. The way I've been defining Black virtuality, right, is Black bodies, Black cultures, Black identities, and the sum of which being, you know, um, Black experiences or Black stories, I'm thinking of, I think about virtuality as how it's constructed and how it's consumed um, across the board, whether that's by, you know, with a, a Black worldview or a non-Black worldview. In the physical space, I have all of those together in one person. It's just, it's, it's me, I'm here. But when we move into these virtual spaces, these mediated spaces, then we see this separation. We see this fragmentation. Um, and when creating the library and working with artists, it was very important to me that it was guided by the sense of what I'm saying is a, a Black intact. I'm gonna show you briefly um, the Open Source Opera Hair Library, our website, which we have a bunch of new things launching in the next month, so I don't get a lot of sleep these days, but um, let's take a look at the website. The way that this is structured, the warmth of the colors, there's a reason why it's not meant to look like a marketplace because we don't want to buy and sell black bodies. Like that, there's a logic behind this, right? There's an approach to this. Um, hopefully there's a familiar, familiarity and a hominess in the way that we do things and present things. Um, the way that we hype our people. Our model page is going live next week fingers crossed, and um, so an important practice that the artists are always present, the artist's voice is there. You know, we wanna, we wanna share our people, we wanna hype them, we wanna talk about the artists, we don't just want sort of like the product of their work. That's a little bit different than, it's actually very different than what you see when you go to, um, when you go to um, other kinds of uh, asset spaces and databases. So culturally informed, sensitive, thoughtful, all shades of black. Um, with a library, there's one thing I'll, I'll touch on before I move move on to this because it's not it's not visible yet. So we've spent a lot of time on the actual design on, of how you navigate the library itself, and um, this is thinking through some of Sophia Noble's work. If people are familiar with familiar with algorithms of oppression, um, where she talked about research she was doing. Uh, using Google search and bas basically how um, that search, it's a populist algorithm. The way that Google works, um, you could, at the time that she was doing this research, they've, they've made some changes as a result. Um, but she, if you were to type in black girls, you wouldn't see images of children playing, for example, you would see pornographic images. 
And this was the same if you typed in Asian girls, it was the same if you typed in uh, Latina girls, right? You'd see pornographic images, even though the term girl is explicitly meant to, you know, be a child, right? So that, that tells you a lot about, you know, the way that we view um, and infantilize and sexualize as a uh, woman of color. And you type in white girls and you would just see what you would expect, what you should be able to expect, right? A frolicking children. Um, and so thinking through a popular search algorithm, I think about that, again, that recursive relationship between um, what we're seeking, the meaning, the images that we see, and then how that gets um, sort of re-entrenched. And so with uh, OSOL, we don't actually have a search bar because I don't want people to go to the, the library and look for what, and find what they're looking for. Because maybe what they're looking for is racist. I have to assume that by default, I live in a racist context. So instead we have um, a tagging system. So you're presented with these images of blackness that maybe you didn't imagine. They weren't what you were looking for because you couldn't even conceive of them. And then we have a tagging system that goes based on like uh, hair texture and hairstyles. So you either know the language of black hair or by using the library, you're learning it. Right. So it's a very different approach as opposed to the more capitalist. We want the user to get exactly what they're looking for so they can buy our stuff. You're not buying anything. I don't care if you find what you're looking for. I want you to be I want our blackness to be imposed upon the viewer. Right.